Brother Tony will put this message on YouTube this week. And because it's Romans chapter 9, it'll get a whole bunch of hits. And because it gets a bunch of hits, a bunch of people will make comments about how Pastor Price is wrong, about God taking people to go to heaven and people go to hell. My friend, if He gave you light and He didn't give it to me, He's an evil God. Let's be real about it. God doesn't pick people to go to heaven or hell. And the Bible teaches all through the Scripture that God wants all men to be saved. We began our study in the book of Romans in the place where the Scripture talked about salvation, and that is in chapters 1 through 4. And the Scripture makes it very plain in chapters 1 through 4 of this book that the difference between somebody who is going to heaven and someone who is going to hell is a choice of belief or unbelief. That every person is born with the knowledge of God in their hearts and that the difference between people who are saved and the people who are lost is not whether or not they have access to God or whether or not God has chosen them for heaven or hell. It's a difference between what they do with Jesus Christ. And we briefly glanced at this a word predestination, it's a good word, the Bible uses it, but it's misused by believers in this way. Many people say, well, God predestinates people to go to heaven and people to go to hell. And look, it's talking about foreknowledge in the passage of Scripture, and foreknowledge, foreknew, means knew before. In other words, before you were ever born, God knew whether you'd be saved or not. And individuals have a hard time dealing with this matter of, does God give us the choice for salvation? Or does God make us go to heaven and go to... Pastor, you ever read chapter 9 where God made Esau and Pharaoh go to hell? You ever read these passages of Scripture? My friend, I want to say to you, Romans chapters 1 through 4 talk about how that all men can be saved. And the Apostle Paul, by the help of God's Holy Spirit, is not contradicting what the Scripture has taught in another place. There are no contradictions in Scripture. Right. And my friend, when you seem to see a contradiction, it's because God has truth that He wants you to come to the realization and the knowledge of. And I just want to present to you the same thing we said last week, and that is that Romans chapter 7, 8, 9 aren't talking about salvation. They're talking about God's character. They're talking about His person. And you know that God can know things in the future without forcing man to go to hell. There's no problem with the foreknowledge of God, my friend. God knows before anything ever happens what will happen. By the way, that's a good reason for us to pray even after something is already over and done with and but we don't know the results yet. Because God knows we'll pray in the future. And He might answer our prayers in the past based on our prayers in the future. And it's a wonderful truth about God that can help us to know how to pray. But friend, God doesn't, by foreknowledge, pick people to go to heaven or hell. My friend, God is good. And if God chose individuals to go to hell, let's be honest about it, He's evil. And that's why people that believe that about God go into depression and come to a place where they, uh, they rebel. You know what? Let's just say it. Almost everybody I know that's ever gotten into the false teaching of Calvinism has become cynical, mm -hmm. has uh, become ungrateful, mm -hmm. and ultimately has gone into a place where they literally want to take their own lives because they wouldn't say it because the Bible says God's good, but they, in their hearts they knew if He chose them to go to heaven and chose someone else to go to hell, or chose them to go to hell and chose someone else to go to heaven, He's not good. Friend, that's reality. If God picks you to go to heaven and picks someone else to go to hell, however you like to say it and dance around the truth, dance around what you're actually saying, and, and every Calvinist will say that no one understands what they believe. Every Calvinist believes something different. And they'll say, well, that's, I believe that God gives some men light and doesn't give other men. My friend, if He gave you light and He didn't give it to me, He's an evil God. Let's be real about it. God doesn't pick people to go to heaven or hell. And the Bible teaches all through the Scripture that God wants all men to be saved. It's taught in the Old Testament. It's taught in the New Testament. It's not something that's changed. God hasn't progressively revealed a different plan of salvation either, my friend. Read Hebrews chapter 10, 11, and 12. All men have always been saved by faith and through Jesus Christ. It's always been. And friend, that's not a new concept. It's not something new. That's God's plan. It has been from the time man sinned. His redemption plan has always been the same. There is no other redemption plan. There never has been a way that man could be reconciled to God and any other person than Jesus Christ. I have to say all this because we are in a passage of Scripture that's oftentimes misquoted and taken out of context. Did God say to Esau, Hey, you can't have a relationship with me and the blessing's not for you? <coughs> Friends, study the Scripture. Esau was a profane man. He didn't love the Lord. He didn't love the things of God. And Romans chapter 9 is not saying God picked Esau to go to hell and picked Jacob to be saved. By the way, look at Jacob. He was wicked. That was a rascal. I'm amazed at the people God chooses to use. It's encouraging to me, a matter of fact. But Jacob in particular. 
Well, Jacob was the good son because God chose him. My friend Jacob was another one of the wicked sons. He was a rascal. He was a liar. He was a deceiver. He stole from his brother. He lied to his parents. His mom was a rascal. Rebecca. She had two sons and she loved one and didn't love the other the same way. And Isaac, what an incompetent father. He loved Esau and didn't care about Jacob. And what a lousy husband. Here he pits his wife and her favorite son against him and his favorite son. There's a division in his family. And Rebecca, what a great wife. Model of submission. Hey, Jacob, sneak in and steal from your dad and your brother. Majorly dysfunctional, and God used them. And here in the Scripture we find that the Bible is not teaching God loved one and hated the other and had nothing to do with them. My friend, it's an illustration that God can use anyone. Hmm. And that God loves everyone. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Here's the question many individuals who are angry at God ask. Why did I get to hear the truth and my brother didn't? Why did the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and convict me of sin and He didn't speak to another person? Why did I get saved and they didn't? How come I got to have a relationship with God and they didn't? Is God unrighteous? Is God unrighteous or people unrighteous? And the answer is God is not unrighteous. God forbid. Here we find illustrations of one that believed and one that didn't. And God condemned the unbeliever as He is just to do so because He's the judge of all men. In verse 16, the Scripture says, So it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh, By the way, study Pharaoh before you go making accusations against God. Who hardened his heart before God hardened the heart of Pharaoh? Pharaoh did. Pharaoh did. And God said, Pharaoh, you want to play that game? I'll make it real hard on you. And I'll go ahead and let you have a hard heart, and here's what I can do with that. God's righteous, my friend. He was righteous to harden the heart of Pharaoh and to judge him. But he didn't pick him to go to hell. He knew Pharaoh was going to go to hell. It's not a complicated doctrine. It's not, it's not something that's unclear in the Scripture. God knows who loves him and who doesn't. God knows who will choose him and who will not. And the reason you can't understand it is because you're not God. Because God wants you to be saved. And the answer is yes. And the, and the question I follow that up with is, how do you know? There's a lot of ways we know. First of all, the Bible says about God, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? Friend, a practical way that I know without ever looking at the Scripture is the fact that God sent Jesus Christ to become sin for me. And friend, Jesus didn't die for no reason. He died because God wanted me to be saved. And He wanted every lost person to be saved. And the Bible teaches that plainly. And you just ask him, how do you know God wants you to be saved? Well, in their, their conclusion, most lost people would say, well, because Jesus died for my sin. And Jesus wouldn't have died if He didn't want me to be saved. God wasn't going to waste the blood of Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't just die at random. By the way, you need Jesus. Listen, throw out your religion. Throw out your pretense of holiness and understand you need Christ. You're saved by Christ's grace and friend. If you don't need to be saved by grace, then the Bible says Christ died in vain and you're yet in your sin. You need to be saved because you're a sinner and Christ died because you're a sinner and you need the work of Christ on the cross. All of us need Jesus, my friend. So God saved us. And he wants all men to be saved. The Scripture establishes that truth. If you want to deal with hypothetical, come up with a redemption plan that doesn't involve Christ. Yeah. Just, you know what, here's, here's something I could submit to God that would make it okay for my sin, my hatred toward Him to be forgiven. That would make it okay, my rebellion and my rejection of Him and make it so that it would be right for Him to forgive me. And you'll be grateful for the person of Christ and the work of the cross because you'll never come up with a plan. One thing that I could come up with that would justify my sin against God is to go to hell. The only thing that would be fair would be me to say, God, well, God, here's the deal. I'll burn in hell for eternity and be forever separated from you. Christian, why do people go to hell? 
Because they trust their own righteousness. Trust their own righteousness. 